client, I had to be taking care of Arlene's needs, whatever they were at any given time. On January 15, 1992, a year after her arrest, 35-year-old Eileen Wernus went on trial in Volusia County, Florida for the murder of Richard Mallory. Our strategy was to convince the jury that Eileen Wernus had acted in self-defense. And then you flip to the other side, uh, this arch-evil woman who is preying on men and murdering them in cold blood. The evidence against Wernus was overwhelming, but for the defendant herself, the most painful moment came when her former lover, Tyra Moore, took the stand to testify against her. Eileen was desperately trying to catch Tyra's eye, but Tyra very pointedly walked up to the witness stand and uh, did not make eye contact with Eileen. I'm not sure that Lee fully understood that Tyra turned on her until she, she saw her in the courtroom testifying. I think that was, I think that's when it hit her, what had happened. She did shed some tears because Tyra basically sat up there and betrayed her. I knew I was doing the right thing. The one thing I am sorry about that is I never did go to the police after the first one because maybe the other six would still be alive. When it came time for the defense to make its case, Eileen proved to be her own worst enemy. I'm scared of my life in County Jail. I'm tired of them trying to kill me there. I explained to her very, very clearly on numerous occasions that because of her, her personality, her inability to maintain calm over any period of time, that she could very well be destroyed on the stand. Wernus, who was the only witness to testify on her behalf, claimed that Richard Mallory had raped and tortured her, and that she shot him in self-defense. He was coming toward me with his right arm, I believe, and I shot immediately, and I think I shot twice, as fast as I could. But during her cross-examination, her hair-trigger mood swings gave the jury a glimpse of the violent temper that had plagued her throughout her life. She really was doing her best acting job. She tried to appear to be a sweet, innocent lady from time to time, and other times uh, she would lapse back into a pretty tough woman. Her actions, coupled with her words, just made her unbelievable. On January 27th, after deliberating for less than two hours, the jury returned with their verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Eileen Carroll Warnes, guilty of first-degree premeditated murder and first-degree felony murder of Richard Mallory. As the jury exited the courtroom, Warnes lashed out at them. I was raped. I hope you get raped. Her fury was still fresh in the jurors' minds as the penalty phase of the trial began the next day. Defense experts testified that Werno suffered from a mental illness known as borderline personality disorder, and therefore, her life should be spared. The jury was not swayed. On January 31st, 1992, Eileen Wernus was sentenced to death. But her violent tale was not yet over, and in the years to come, she would be certain to get the last word. It's seven counts of first-degree murder, seven counts of robbery. But there's something else that needs to be told. Over the next two years, she would plead no contest to three other counts of murder and enter guilty pleas on two more. She asked me to get it over. I thought, why would you volunteer for execution? And I know the answer. The answer is because you're going to sit in a little seven by nine room for the next 20 years until all your appeals are done. And now I know I'm in big with you, Lord, real big, as I sit here with seven deaths over my head. In January 1992, Eileen Wernus was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to death. She was 36 years old. Wernus claimed that she had found God. All I know what her good side was, that she believed in God, believed in the Lord, and she was going to heaven. She lived and breathed with her Bible, because in the Bible were the answers to her questions, how do you get to God? Despite her push to be executed, Warnus would have to wait on death row while her automatic appeals were exhausted. 
she tried to fill her time by reading her Bible and drawing scenic pictures with a blue ink pen. Arlene Prally, the born-again Christian who had adopted Wernus, dropped out of her life after Wernus accused her of trying to profit from her case. She started her drawings to her and all that, but Arlene was saving all of them, actually because she was going to have a museum and sell Arlene's products. Dawn Botkins, who had known Eileen since they were teenagers, remained her closest friend. Eileen wrote her constantly, sometimes four letters a day. I never asked her why she killed those guys or anything. I was her life outside. I gave her life. I gave her all the pictures, included her in my life, and gave her snow, and gave her sun, and gave her the ocean. There's a limit to what you can do when you're in lockdown 23 hours a day. And with Eileen, she was exposed to very few people. She was very lonely. She was starved for human contact. In July 2001, Eileen Wernus, at the age of 45, appeared before Circuit Judge Michael Hutchison to ask the state to stop her mandated appeals and proceed with her death sentence. So you do wish to, in essence, fire CCRC, terminate their representation? Absolutely, and stop the uh, uh, using taxpayers' money and stuff like that. It's just ridiculous. In her bid to be executed, she told the court that the murders were not an act of self-defense, as she had once contended. I wanted to come clean and tell the world I killed those men first degree. Robbed and killed them to keep from any witnesses. But before going to her death, in a jailhouse interview with Orlando's WESH-TV, she tried to place some of the blame on police. In fact, three detectives were investigated for seeking out movie deals before her trial. Society needs to know, and they need to investigate. Even if I'm dead and gone, they need to find out about. I feel, I think, the cops knew who I was and let me become a serial killer. She really believed they had set her up, that they wanted her so bad, that they wanted to be in Hollywood and to be, in her terms, rich and famous, that they were willing to let innocent people die in order to promote themselves. She believed that. On April 1st, 2002, the Florida Supreme Court upheld Eileen Wernus's request to end her appeals. Her execution was scheduled for October. She wrote that she used the time to try and make things right with God. I come to you as best I can in memory of my life of sins. She listed her many transgressions, but once again, she blamed her descent into murder in part on others, including her ex-lover, Tyra Moore.